could there also be a squeeze on the bigger banks as a practical matter, as more well, and more big yeah. commercial entities come into their neighborhood and compete with them, for example, for deposit taking? There are still a lot of people who want a physical location to go to for their banking services. And Walmart can provide that with all its stores, uh, elderly people, you know, people, lower income people who don't have access to the internet. The, the ability to also provide not just uh, technolog technologically remote services, but also a physical location, I think, is an advantage uh, that that Walmart could provide and a benefit to that segment of the population that still wants a wants a, an actual banking physical space to go to. So yes, and in that context, their their vast array of stores could be highly competitive with these larger banks uh, branch operations. So it's, you're right, it's not clear that it would just be an impact to, on community banks. Well, you raise a very interesting possibility, I think. We have talked for some time about the unbanked and the underbanked in the United right. States, typically in poor communities, you suggest, yes. suggest uh, and how we address that. We haven't been successful terribly in doing that. Could a Walmart moving in actually help address that problem in the country? Well, I think they could. I mean, I think lower income and lower middle income Americans are, are, are a very big part of Walmart's uh, uh, customer base. And so they're coming to those stores already. So yeah, I mean, I think we need to know what Walmart plans. <laughs> if they just plan to, you know, fatten their profit margins, well, good for them, but you know, that's not really a public policy reason to provide the charter, approve the charter. But if, yeah, if they can leverage that reach that they have with the unbanked and underbanked populations to provide a fuller panoply of financial services at low cost, at mainstream cost, right? So people can go to payday lenders and pawn shops now and get financial services at a very high cost. But if Walmart uh, can democratize, uh, further democratize credit and banking services and provide at the same cost that you and I get, then I think that would be hugely beneficial. So, you know, we need to stay tuned in terms of what Walmart uh, is, uh, what the value proposition is that they're contemplating, but there's certainly a lot of potential there. Well, talk about that value proposition. We can't get in Doug McMillan's head, I don't think. Certainly, I no. can't. Uh, but he's made no secret of the fact that he's interested in moving into this. Why do you think that is? Because Walmart does is at least part of a lot of financial services offered to yeah. its customers right now through yeah. distribution arrangements with regular yeah. banks, but also through direct uh, relationships with its own customers. Well, it, it is. It is some crowded space, uh, but I, you know, I think there's probably a lot of money to be made by again internalizing it as opposed to doing it through through bank partnerships. It's interesting. They seem to be really focused on financial technology. Is part, you know, they're talking about creating a, some type of fintech uh, entity, which in that's pretty crowded space already. It, it seems to me that they're stronger. Uh, they're, they're the greater strength in this. Their competitive strength is their stores, right? They have physical locations, they can provide that and they have a customer base that's, that's ready-made. They can, those unbanked and underbanked that the mainstream uh, banking uh, organizations have not been able to reach, they're their customers already. So it seems to me that's their benefit, not so much as utilizing financial technology uh, that can help lower the cost of providing the services, but their, their strength is their pre-existing customer base and their physical facilities. 